Iris Johnston. Welcome to Page to Screen, where we explore the art and craft of screenwriting and independent filmmaking. Tonight, we're going to talk about writing and producing on a micro budget. Joining us is producer Tom Steinman. Yay. Yay. We could not ask for anyone better to be talking to us about this subject, Tom. Thanks for coming. I'm glad to be here, and this is my first time on this side of the uh, of the camera uh, on page to screen. Well, you're doing great. Oh, I'm <laughs> glad to hear. You're, you're <laughs> awesome. Um, you have an interesting background that takes you back to home videos. Yes. So talk me through how you get from home videos to yes, well, micro budgets. For, for those younger people, these were boxes, plastic boxes with tape inside them where you could put them in a machine and watch a movie. But uh, I came to Nashville about 40 years ago with my wife. We were in the music business and um, we decided to move to Nashville where we probably got into the video business. And um, I went to work for video distributors selling uh, videotapes to video stores and then later became a buyer of video cassettes from major studios like Disney and Columbia and then went to work for Columbia as a uh, what was called a distributor um, marketing something or other where uh, it, Columbia was a distributor and I uh, sold marketed and uh, ran distribution for um, all kinds of movies for blockbusters, hundred million dollar blockbuster movies. So you saw a lot of movies, right? And were around a lot of movies, right? And you really, as for the writers in the crowd, you really learn how to put together a log line really fast because that's the way you sell movies. So you've written a lot of log lines. Yes, yes, that's the way movies are sold and um, purchased. So if you're in sales or marketing, you've got to come up with log lines on the fly. To talk about movies. Wow. Okay. So, and then, and then from there, you became how did how did you do micro budgets or get into write uh, films? Yeah, I actually, uh, films? I left the home video business sort of as the home video business left the world, slowly but surely becoming digital. And um, uh, but I got really interested in the creative process, um, being a musician, and uh, started to write and came to the Tennessee Screenwriting Group, and where I met. Um, um, you know, great people, and every week there's a meeting where people do table reads of their material and pitch great ideas and and hear feedback. Um, I know that's where I met you. Yeah, right. And um, so eventually evolved to do uh, a couple shorts, be involved with some short films. Uh -huh. And after many years, I really wanted to produce a movie or two, and and. Uh, progressing from shorts and the natural uh, evolution is sort of to a micro budget movie that's yes wow so can you define what a micro budget film is for us yeah technically I guess if there is a definition it's any movie that's made for less than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars okay which you know by Hollywood standards is a micro budget <laughs> mm -hmm. hello, 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 micro budget. right yeah right and this is really um, it's a great step for new writers going from writing shorts, producing shorts, to doing a micro-budget feature. Right. right? Yeah. One of the great advantages of TSA is to be able to hear your own words. And then as you would get on to doing some shorts that you've written, then again, you're hearing your own words on camera and you're editing it together and you know, you're really getting a sense of your own writing. That's great. And so you and Bob right. uh, came together and uh, in development came up with The Odds, which was a micro-budget film that you produced right. with him. Um, talk to us about that and yeah, that yeah. with The him. genesis of that was that Bob had written a short, and Bob has been a president of TSA and also has won several screenwriting contests. And so um, He's a great writer. He's a terrific writer. Uh, but he had written a short uh, about a game of Russian roulette, uh, so it was a short film, um, you know, the way it was written and very dramatic. So we envisioned that as as the end of a micro-budget movie yeah. because that could be the climax, oh, the climactic part. Oh, interesting. Okay. So we actually, he worked backwards from that okay, yeah. ending to write the rest of it, 
which is a progression. It's a, uh, it's a, a game between, uh, between who we call the game master character and the player. Bob is not able to be with us here today, but let's take a look at what he had to say about the his odds. film, The Odds. I started uh, trying to think of ideas for stories that would just have one character, um, and that's actually super hard <laughs> to come up with a story that's compelling all the way through, that has the right level of conflict, that has single character. There's only a, a handful of movies, I think, that have been produced that really work. But I actually did come up with what I thought was a pretty cool idea for two character stories. So I wrote a short script based on that. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, uh, if, if I'm going to go to all the effort of shooting a short script, then why not go to the extra effort and turn it into a feature? So that short script um, actually became the third act of uh, the odds. I was trying to think of thematic elements to it. I was trying to come up with another layer to the story. It started out as mostly just plot with a little hint of some other stuff going on. But I wanted to develop it into something that had a little more meaningful emotional punch. So when I flipped one of the characters to a uh, female, um, I started thinking down the roads of um, how this could be an allegory for domestic abuse. You ready to play? Was that absolutely necessary? The game. There are 19 other players in 19 other locations, just like this. There are five preliminary rounds followed by a finalist round. If you leave at any point during the preliminary rounds, you will leave with zero prize money. I won't quit. I thought there was gonna be a gun. Not yet. Last chance before the paint starts. The paint started a long time ago. Do you know what your mistake was? You forgot that there are two animals in this cage. I said I won't quit. So Tom, take us through the odds so folks can get a sense of what's involved in a micro budget from beginning to end. Yes, and um you know, it's a, it really is a success story as a, a small scope movie. Um, there are two characters, main characters, and three extras in the entire movie. Okay. And uh, So one of the things that help, is helpful when writing, right. keep your character list as small as you can. Yes, to, be, to create a successful micro-budget movie, you want to keep the scope very limited. You know, that means as few locations as possible, as few characters as possible, as few, as little crew as possible. Right. You know, don't have a lot of songs, don't have a lot of dogs and children, <laughs> you know. And Water. Don't make a period yeah. piece and, you know, don't go to other continents. So um, that's, that, those are the parameters and there's a lot more. And uh, so, uh, so that's the first step of, of the process is to come up with a really great script. Hopefully it has a high profile concept, which is, you know, something that's going to splash out at the world like, wow, uh, that sounds interesting. Um, so once you've got that idea, uh, for instance, with the odds, it leads to a, it's a game a bet on by people on the internet somewhere mm -hmm. uh, between the game master and the player. And the culmination, spoiler alert, is a game of Russian roulette and there's kind of some really harsh stuff along the way and it's abusive and very scary mm -hmm. and uh, that's yep. one reason why I don't write because I don't like to throw rocks at my main character yeah. but anyway uh, so that's the first Bob step Giordano is writing. doesn't mind. Yeah he doesn't mind. Throwing yeah he likes like that. that. Yeah. So um, <laughs> anyway uh, so once you have your script 
you still have to do the normal stuff of any script is to try to break it down how many scenes how many um you know how many actors how many days of production is where you're trying to get to and you're trying to minimize the number of days because that is dollars you know that's the amount of days you have to pay actors the amount of days you have to pay your crew the amount of days you have to bring in food service for everybody to eat something mm -hmm. so um with the odds uh, we shot for 10 days uh and we covered 10 pages of of script every day mm -hmm. and there's one or two pickup scenes but for the most part it's our characters in their main location you know struggling and you know having this um this kind of war game between them it's almost like sumo wrestlers um so that's and that's what keeps it going another thing for writers is that you really have to have some kind of action some kind of engine for your story that's more than just people talking so let's talk about the casting process so the odds uh only has two main actors so mm -hmm. it was kind of a simultaneous process okay. there um and then our extras uh one of our extras was also the stunt coordinator so this Perfect. is something that you know you have to especially if you're going to put some action scenes in your movie and also our our movie the small though it was or is uh was a sag movie and real quick i'll tell a little story was that our our first cast dropped out on us a week before shooting so we had to re recast the movie and go back and shoot again 3 oh weeks gosh. later. So there's a little war story. And you were ready to go. So Yeah, right. But uh it's important that, you know, when you're trying to shoot, you know, 10 pages a day, you've got to start to uh maximize and be productive. So for instance, Bob Giordano, the director, writer, director also storyboarded the entire movie. Mhm. Mm so and that's very important to communicate with everyone in your crew, your Mm -hmm. cinematographer your your you know camera people even and your sound people mm -hmm. and your actors and actresses you know it's like well here we are on page 32 of the storyboards mm -hmm. this is what we want it to look like right and we can shoot from this angle and also in terms of pre-production you don't just show up on the day of you're yeah. there beforehand with your cinematographer with your um with your sound guy if you can get him and uh and you're you're blocking how these mm -hmm. shots are going to go through the whole movie as much as you can work in to yeah. your with your limited budget. So did you shoot with a single camera, Tom? Actually, no. We shot with two cameras all the time. Okay. And uh that's really kind of one of our secret production uh thoughts or strategies. It was so a way to keep we, it micro budget. Right. Right. Okay. So we and you know of course the cameras have to be at different angles whether you're not right. you don't wind up you with can't see the, camera. the other camera guy in your shot. Right. So uh but also we shot a lot of low shots looking up at our actors and um so you would get one low and one higher up or one farther away. Mhm. Mm so yeah. you always have some place to cut to hopefully is interesting. You know, sure, sure. To keep it going because it's another strategy for micro budget production is cutting. It's something you can do. to move the camera without you know like doing weird stuff uh-huh uh-huh but you can you can move the angle of view right and also part of the micro budget is one location yes which you guys nailed it yeah pretty and much and we spent a lot of time in our one location we yeah. painted the whole garage and and um you know we dressed it you know very thoroughly so again it's it's um uh, you know there were days of pre-production that weren't as expensive as the days of production. <laughs> so this is, you know, another strategy. Right. Did you have like a prop master or a set designer yes. and you had to pay these people? We had both. Yeah. And that so, was in there. Yeah. Yeah. So these were, you know, and not everybody, no one is really getting their rate if they're doing this professionally. If they're doing a micro budget movie, everybody kind of, you know, says, "Oh, okay, I get it." This is it. And um yeah. you have and with in some cases you have what's called a deferral where Mhm. Mm you just don't pay someone anything until you have maybe some money. <laughs> We've gone through the production and now you have a movie in the can. You're done spending money, right? Nothing mm. for post-production. <laughs> um, so one might think, you know, just put it together. <laughs> right. Uh, but no, it's no. uh, you know, that's really a lot of times uh Bob uh again Bob Giordano um 
tells a story about how you really, as a director and as a writer, writer-director, you're putting the, the story out there more than one time. You're mm -hmm. writing it, but then you're kind of rewriting it when you're directing it. Right. And then you're rewriting it again in post. Yep. And you're cutting stuff out and you're taking, choosing certain shots that were good, that you know were really hot and are leaving stuff out that didn't go as well. Right. And, you know, that's, that's editing, that's post-production. Did you have to go back and pick up anything that you left out in, after editing? Like, no, no. no we, good. No, because, you know, you sometimes you have to go back and get a few, a few, um, if the sound wasn't perfect on somebody's line or, mm -hmm. you know, there was a sound that was out of control, <laughs> which is another funny story because we didn't realize that uh, next door there was going to be like these, these guys uh, like moving lumber around. Mm. So <laughs> a lot of our takes were busted by oh. like sound from the next, next to the garage kind of thing. It was a big yeah. garage, like basement warehouse kind of place. Yeah. So you have to control the sound. Right. And then, you know, so <laughs> anyway, that's a thing that happened. Locked picture and score. Right. These are, you know, anything to say about the odds yes. and how that went? Yeah. I mean, basically, post-production is not all one thing. It's a series of waves. Because <laughs> first it has to go to your editor, and then you have a guy who's going to do color correction mm -hmm. nowadays. Right. You have a guy who's going to do your scoring, or, you know, a lot of times it's sound design, because in a horror movie, it's not like you don't no, have an orchestra. Right. Yeah. You There's have like tones, of, yeah. and industrial, you know, yeah. weird things going and rising and falling. Yeah. Along with some music and, and the theme song. And right. So there's a whole lot of sound design happening. Right. You know, right. after the movie is in the can. So there's a whole world of movie making after you finish shooting. Okay. So I love everything about making a movie and I love hearing about all of this. I just want to remind myself and anyone in the audience, this is important for writers, especially new writers, to understand all of this, the whole yes. process. They need a lot of awareness about all of the steps. So I hear you have a new project called Gates of Flesh and this one is a more true horror type film. Uh, what is it about? Yes, it's, uh, this is a kind of a end of days demonic possession movie. Yeah. So uh, we have more actors involved and uh, okay. a group of young actors who happen to be on the run from, from demons and, um, and how they hold up in a, uh, a large church facility and okay. um, what happens along the way as um, some of them may get possessed by demons. Oh, they might. Huh? They might. It so this might one happen. was also written and directed by Bob Giordano again. Yes. You guys yeah. are quite a team. Yep. Um, great. Uh, I think we have a clip, so let's take a look. Okie dokie. is the end of the world. What is this place? We do it right. Fortress? Do you know anyone that was infected? My entire apartment was overrun with those things. We go back out there without a plan? We're done. We're gonna make it. Okay, I don't care what we have to do as long as we're safe. <laughs> Danny? She could have infected him. She could be infecting us right now. You think this is an infection? But don't you know that wherever there is man, we have a gate into this world. You'll all die! I don't want to hurt you. Oh, but what if I want to hurt you? Yeah. 
Okay, this looks really scary for sure. So, what would you say the major differences are between making the odds and making gates of flesh? And what was easier, what was harder? Right, well, the odds was scaled way down to absolutely minimal, minimalist uh, production. And um, so, with gates of flesh, we expanded our cast and pretty much everything in terms of, um, you know, days shooting and the location. It was location. 10 days on the odds. What was it for Gates of Flesh? It, was, it wasn't too much, too many more days. Okay, it was still, you know, maybe 12 to 14. Okay. So it's still a lot of pages per day. Uh, but also mm -hmm. within the uh, larger facility, because the odds is really one big warehouse room or garage. And um, this is now... Gates of Flesh is a big church facility, so there are many setups within this larger building. Okay. So any time you you know go to a new setup within a location, right? It's all about lighting again, and it's about you know um, blocking with actors and actresses. Mm -hmm. A bigger crew. And yeah, bigger crew and one camera, two moving cameras more on people. This one. Again, we did the two cameras. You did. Um, and. Um, because it really helped our editing process. Uh, and also kind of that whole, you know, two perspectives, you it's, know, lower, higher, yeah. farther back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you always have two perspectives and something Going to Going in, to. that's great. But you have, you don't have to shoot twice and right. get the actors to right. match right. what they did Which on a lot of sets shot. they do. They set, yeah, up, yeah. set it up again and do it again. Yeah, but um, that... And was this one also so micro-budget, Gates of Flesh? Is yes. it still... Okay, it yeah, is. Yeah, still okay. within those parameters. Okay. But um, that way um, you, you can save theoretically save time because the actors don't have to shoot, you know, like one big master shot. Mm -hmm. And then Tire. from his point of view, Tire. from her point yes. of view. Uh -huh. So you minimize the mm -hmm. amount of time overall. Okay. Um, one thing I keep hearing a lot about, um, might have been from you, um, is how it's really a great idea to, if you could get your horror projects. I'm going to refer to both of those as horror, both Gates of Flesh and The Odds. If you can turn them into a franchise, and i I'm guessing this happens at the front end of writing it. Yes. Right? Or, or, or ideally it would happen at the front end. So just, I guess, maybe walk me through, say I was going to try to write a horror screenplay and I was hoping it be could become a franchise. Yeah. How, what would be some good advice you could give me? Right. Well, it goes back to, I think, one thing that was mentioned early in the show, which was uh, you really, you're not going to have any star power in your micro budget movie because you can't afford it unless you happen to know you know <laughs> a real big star who can walk through one day but um so you what are you going to rely on to make this movie interesting to mm -hmm. your audience mm -hmm. well you want what's called a high profile concept okay so this would be something that you know is a big splash into uh you know, people instantly realize that, you know, this is interesting to them. Like Sharknado, for mm -hmm, example, mm -hmm. is a comedy, but, you know, yeah. it's like that kind of splash of an idea. Or, you know, in the world of horror, you know, it's like, who is your, who is your monster? You know, what mm -hmm. kind of, what kind of uh, horrible thing are you projecting here? <laughs> you know, who is your demon? Who is your, uh, you know, um, what's, what's, what's the big you know, bad thing about this mm -hmm. this movie that's going to be interesting to watch. Right, um, uh, several times. But, but if, so, did you and Bob think through on either of of the odds or Gates of Flesh at the beginning? We want to do a number two or a number yes. three. Okay. Yeah. And the carry through and the odds and is the uh, the game. The, yeah. You know, the internet betting on this uh, battle between yeah. protagonist and antagonist. Yeah. So, you know, theoretically, you can write another protagonist, another antagonist. Another one, yeah. But keep the concept, high-profile concept, going. Right. Uh, so, and on Gates of Flesh, uh, it's really a whole different type of uh, type of movie because, you know, again, spoiler alert, it, you know, <laughs> uh, bad things happen to the characters, <laughs> and uh, you know, there's 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 kind of an ending that's leaves left yeah left to where the world is you know changed forever and oh. and 
you know, maybe characters could go on to the new changed world, which is kind of like uh, um, uh, uh, Walking Dead with zombies. Oh. We could have a world of... We could keep going. Yeah, a world of demons that our characters could progress into. Any other projects that you're working on right now that you're allowed to talk about with us? Well, uh, we're really kind of focused on on uh, possible sequels for, for, you know, The Odds and or Gates of That would of be Lush. really fun. I want to see that happen. Yeah, I mean, me just, too. Yeah, I bet you do. I bet <laughs> you do. So we're out of time, but thank you, Tom, for sharing your experiences with us. I know there's a few people out there that are thinking of getting into making shorts or micro-budget features, and this will be very, very helpful for them. Thank you. Thank you. Page to Screen is sponsored by the Tennessee Screenwriting Association. To find out more about the TSA, including our meeting schedule, or to become a member, visit us online at www.tenscreen.com or check out our Facebook page. We meet online through Zoom every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central, except for the last Wednesday of the month when we meet here in the studio. Page to Screen also has a Facebook page, and we're on Instagram now, so go check us out. Get the most up-to-date info on the show's calendar and guests. Tom, do you have any final words of wisdom for all of our fellow storytellers out there and filmmakers? Sure. Hit me with it. Uh, yeah, so I think, again, it's a valuable experience to hear, hear your words that you're writing, either in a table read, in a TSA meeting, or in a short film or in a micro-budget movie. I'm Iris Johnston. Thanks for watching Page to Screen. And remember, keep on writing.